Hello everybody, and welcome back to the SolidCam introductory series. In this video, we're going to cover profile operations. To add a profile operation, we can go to the SolidCam 2.5D tab and click on Profile. We can also click on the SolidCam Operations tab, click on the 2.5D icon, and go down to Profile. Or we can right-click on Setup, go to Add Milling Operation, and click on Profile. Now at its heart, Profile is a very simple type of operation. It's just going to follow the exact contour that you define right on that line. So the first thing we have to do is define our geometry, and this is going to work the same way as we showed in our pocketing operation, but we'll give you a brief overview in this one as well. So first thing, we're going to click on New, and this will open up our geometry selection dialog. And this is where we're going to select our various lines and line segments that define the contour we want our profile to follow. To give you a quick overview of how you use this tool, we're going to turn off a couple of the functions that actually are intended to help and make this process a little bit faster, just to show you the base configuration of the tool. The first thing we have to do is select our starting edge. In this case, let's say that I want to work on the outside profile of this part. So I'll actually select this edge out here. And right away, you'll notice a couple of things have happened. Firstly, the edge that I actually selected has now turned yellow to indicate that it's part of my selection. That same edge has then been projected up onto our tool plane and shown in this magenta line. You'll also notice two sets of red arrows. This first single-headed arrow is going to indicate the direction of our chain. And in this case, I'd actually like this to be going the other way. So if I look over at my chain list dialog on the left, I have the option to reverse my chain. If I click that, we'll see that my arrow is now pointing in the opposite direction. The second red arrow, this triple-headed arrow here, is going to indicate my next selection for this tool. So you can see that right now we're pointing down to this smaller line segment at the top, and that's going to be the next selection if I click on this button right here, which adds the selected element. You can see that that next section is now highlighted in yellow to indicate it's part of my selection, and it's been projected up onto the top plane as well. But if we wanted to grab a different edge, in this case maybe we want to go down our part for example, we simply have to come back to our dialog, click the change direction icon, and you'll see that my arrow is now flipped to one of my other options. From here I can simply continue along and select that next element, and I can continue to do this until I've grabbed all the geometry that I'm looking for. And you can see I can go up the part, down the part, it doesn't really matter, because no matter which lines we grab, we're just going to project that geometry up onto our tool plane until we have our chain. Now you can see how this can get a little bit tedious to have to select every single segment like this, so we have a couple of tools to speed up the process. I'll hit the red X right here to clear my selection, and I'll turn back on some of those helpful little functions like constant Z for example. What constant Z is going to do is it's going to look at my first selection and grab all of the other segments that are at that same Z level. So in this case, if I grab this first edge of my outer edge, it's going to recognize all of these connected lines that are all at that same Z level. And if I click yes to tell SolidCam that yes, this is the geometry I'm looking for, we'll see it gets added to my chain list. Now SolidCam has assumed the direction of my chain, in this case going from left to right. If I wanted to reverse that, I can simply right click on my chain and say reverse. And we'll see that that arrow flips to match. Now for the sake of this first little demonstration, I actually want to grab a slightly different profile. So let me right click on this chain and delete it. And we're actually going to grab down here instead. So I'm going to turn off constant Z, I'm going to grab this edge, and we're just going to move up until we have the front or back half of this boss completely selected. Click the green check mark and lock in our chain. I'll hit the green check mark one more time. And we're back to our operation. And just a quick note, we actually do have a selection dialog here. So if you've previously defined a contour in a different operation that you'd like to reuse, you can simply grab it from the drop down menu here. And if you ever forget what geometry you actually have in that contour, you can simply click on show and we'll show you that geometry. Next, I'm going to select my tool. And again, we've already covered how to use the toolkit in a different video. So for here, we're just going to select our, let's go with a quarter inch tool. The data tab here is where we define all of our speeds and feeds. And our coolant tab here is where you would define things like MQL, mist coolant, flood coolant, if you have those options available on your machine. Next up is going to be our levels tab. In this case, we're defining things like the upper level and the depth of our profile. The upper level, for example, I can define by the top of the target the top of the stock, or user defined. Now in this case, I've already done a facing operation, so I've cleared off the top of my stock, so what I really care about is the top of the target, so I'm going to leave that alone. As for the profile depth, however, in this case I may want to change this. So for example, if I sent this all the way to the bottom of the target, it's actually going to plunge all the way through my part, because again, I'm working just on top of this boss right here. What I really want to do is define the top surface of this boss. Now if I happen to know the height of it, I could just click in this box and type in whatever value. I think it's 0.875, for example. And that would work just fine. We see that the option has changed to user defined, and I have my value right here. 
The problem with this though is that this is a hard-coded value. If I happen to change anything about this geometry, this number will always be in this operation as 0.875, even if this face is now somewhere totally different. It'd be really nice if I could have this associatively linked so that it always grabs the top surface of this face. And fortunately, we make that really easy to do. Simply click in the box, and then select the geometry you'd like to link to. You'll see that we automatically update to the value that specifies that surface, and it's now color-coded green to imply that it's been associatively linked to geometry in the model itself. So now if at any point I go back and actually change my model geometry, say I push this face a little higher or a little lower, it's not going to care because it knows that it's the face that it cares about and not the hard-coded distance that it's relative to. Now if I wanted to, I can also add an offset to any of these values. So say I wanted to go maybe an extra 5 thou off the bottom of my part, I can say minus 5 thou. We have a little indicator to show you the direction we're moving, and I have a little bit of an offset below the surface if I needed that. But for now, we're just going to leave that at zero. Next, we have our technology tab, and this is where we're going to define how this toolpath is generated. The first thing we'll define is which side of our profile we actually want to cut on. So if we remember from our original geometry, we have a line that goes from this corner right here up and along this part here. So in this case, I want to be cutting on the left side of my profile to be able to machine this boss, which is where it's set currently. Let's generate some toolpaths so we can see what we're talking about. So SolidCam is aware of the tool we've selected, so it knows the diameter and radius of that tool, and it's simply going to offset our original profile geometry so that the edge of our tool makes contact with that geometry. Now in this case, my geometry is going to define where the start and end of my toolpath is. But in this case, it might be a little abrupt to start right at this transition here, so I may want to actually start a little bit further off this front edge here. And fortunately, we can do that fairly easily. If we click on the geometry button right here, this brings up our modified geometry dialog. Here we can see our original selected chain, as well as a little silhouette of what our tool diameter is. In this case, if I actually want to start a little bit off of this geometry, I can simply add, say, 100 thou to this edge, and we'll see that it pulls that a little bit further out. Similarly, if I want to end off of my profile, I can just add, say, a quarter inch of extension to the end of my profile as well. If I had closed geometry, say I was doing the outside profile of this entire part, I could also specify where along that path I wanted to start and end. Normally, again, it's going to use the start and end of your actual contour, so if I clicked this edge, it would use this as my starting point, but I could manually tell it to shift that starting point somewhere else. We'll hit the green check mark to confirm, and go back to our operation. Now you can see by default we have one finished pass selected, but we can also do some roughing passes as well. And you'll see that when we click on our roughing passes, we open up our options for wall and floor offsets. If I make this wall offset a bit larger so that we can actually see it, let's say 100 thou, and regenerate this toolpath, we'll see that we now actually have two passes for this profile operation. We have our first roughing pass, and then we have our finishing pass as well. Here we can also specify a step down, so let's say we can only go down 100 thou at a time if we recalculate. We'll see that we now take a number of passes until we get to our full depth. Now an important note here, this profile pa operation is only aware of the profile that I've defined. It's not aware of where I may or may not have material in this part that it wouldn't be okay to pass a tool through. So if I look at where I've told it to actually machine, Let's pretend for a minute that I've done a pocketing operation, and I've cleared out all of this inside material, but I haven't machined on top of these bosses yet. In that case, this toolpath is just going to plow into essentially a full slot through all of this material, and that's not ideal. So instead what we can do is try to tell it that, hey, there's some extra material here that we actually need to start off of before we work our way in. And the way we do that is with our clear offset. If I click on offset, I can actually select a location, in this case we'll say this edge right here, and if I wanted to, I could tweak the X, Y, and Z positions at that point. I'll hit the green check mark, and I'll give it a max allowable step over. In this case, maybe 100 thou. If I recalculate now, you'll see that we've actually pulled this entire profile down off the part. Here, let's drop that roughing down and recalculate. So now you can see that what we've actually done is told it that there's essentially extra material here that we need to carefully approach and true away at piece by piece. So here it's going to obey our maximum step over and just project that profile out until it's off the edge of our offset. Now let's turn that off and look at some of our strategies for actually stepping down. So we'll turn roughing back on, we'll give ourselves a maximum step over and recalculate our toolpath. And you can see that we have a number of levels we'll have to work our way down through. By default, depth tug is set to constant, but we can also set it to something like helical. And in this case, we can define it to slowly work its way down from top to bottom. And if we regenerate, we see that it's going to essentially spiral its way down instead of moving in discrete steps. And if we switch back over to something like constant, we do get the option to define whether we want one way or zigzag to help avoid some air cutting, but it will switch between climb and conventional cutting instead. Let's turn that roughing back off 
and let's go look at some of our linking options. Now you can see by default, our lead-ins are set to arc for our lead-in and our lead-out, but if we wanted to have this be a tangent approach, we could do that as well. And you can see that now we're coming in tangent to this edge instead of with a swooping arc. And we can modify the values here to be whatever makes the most sense for this particular cut. Now there's a couple extra things I want to show you if you're using profile for doing a chamfering operation. So let's save and calculate. We're going to close this, and we're going to add one more of our operations here. So we'll go to profile. And this time, let's say we want to chamfer the outside edge of our part. So we'll grab some new geometry. We have constant Z turned on. We'll just grab this outside edge. We'll tell it yes. Green check mark. Let's grab ourselves a chamfering tool. And now let's jump back to our technology tab. And under rest material chamfer, let's select chamfer. Now what we're defining here is how far up on our actual chamfering mill we want to actually make our cut. So in this case, we're defining a constant cutting diameter of 50 thou. So wherever we start to see that 50 thou diameter on our edge, that's what we're actually gonna have follow our profile that we've defined. So if I go back to my levels tab, and let's define a depth of maybe 20 thou. and save and calculate. We can see that we have a 20 thou chamfer all the way around our part. And if we actually go and view this in our host CAD, and step through, we can see that we're engaging the material, making a 20 thou deep chamfer, and that we're engaging it at the point on our tool where we see that 50 thou constant diameter. So just to review, if we go back to our operation, our levels tab, our depth is gonna define the actual depth of our chamfer. And if we go to technology and chamfer under this chamfer tab right here, this is gonna define how far up or down in our tool to actually make that cut. So for example, if I made this much more drastic, say 0.15, recalculate, you'll see that my tool path drops down and over. And if I simulate this again in the host CAD and step through a couple operations, you can see that we're still making that 20 thou deep chamfer, but we've moved much higher up on the tool. And if we actually simulate this in our solid verify and run this through, we'll see that nice chamfer all the way the, around the outside of our part. And that's going to do it for our video on the profile operation. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to the help desk information in the description of this video or to leave a comment directly. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.